then possibly this will be more smooth. Yes. Uh, sir, almost uh, 16 bills are pending before you for the approval from the uh, National Assembly, including the University Summonment Bill and the Logaita Bill. Will you uh, sign it? I have not seen any bill. I have not seen any bill. But you have. They have. No. You are saying that they are pending in the Raj Bhavan? No. As a, uh, if the bills have come to the Raj Bhavan during last three days when I was not in Tirvendram, then I cannot say anything about it. But when I left Tirvendram, I am here in this area since last four days. So the day I left Raj Bhavan to come to Kochi, till then there was no bill. But uh, you are saying that the bills have come. You are saying that? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? Uh, what is your plan then? Are you going to sign it or uh, are you... I have made it repeatedly clear that the assembly has every right to pass and adopt any measure. But I have a duty to perform, an obligation to see that whatever is recommended to me and I'm asked to sign it, is exactly in accordance with constitution, with law, its spirit, and also well-established conventions, not just in India, all over the world. So let me tell you, whatever I have read from the newspapers, I have not seen the bills, but whatever I have read from the newspapers, one thing I can make clear. I shall not allow the autonomy of the university to be diluted. I shall not allow executive interference in the universities, which means government trying to take the power of appointment in its own hands. That is not possible. That will result in erosion of autonomy. Autonomy of the university is a sacred concept that cannot be allowed. I cannot allow a mechanism to be adopted whereby it can be used to appoint underqualified and unqualified relatives of those who are in power, relatives of the personal staff of the chief minister, and, and I'm saying chief minister. I will not allow the relatives, und unqualified and underqualified uh, relatives of chief minister and ministers to be appointed on the role of the university. Secondly, it is clear, yeah. university. Yeah, clear. Other bill, important bill. The law of jury, the basic jurisprudential principle does not allow that a person should be judge in his own cause. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Nobody, if there, is a, if there is a case against you, if there is an accusation against you, you cannot be asked, you cannot, you cannot take the role to dis make decision about it. That is not possible. And it is my, why it is my duty? Because ultimately, democratically elected government does not mean that we will break the law. Democratically, democratically elected government means that we shall adhere to the law and rules. The rule of law shall be upheld. Rule of law shall not be diluted. If somebody is trying to use our powers, you make a complaint against me. I, I will refer it to somebody else to decide. I cannot sit in judgment on a complaint which has been made against me. So it is very clear that on these basic issue, issues, and this I'm saying on the ba basis of what uh, the proceedings of the assembly which I have read, and the comments in the newspapers which have been published, on that basis I'm saying that. I have not yet seen the file, but nobody can and should expect me. <laughs> you remember, a few months back I had said yeah. that uh, uh, you take over the post of chancellor, you do whatever you want to do, but you want to do everything, you want to, and me to sign that, that is not possible. 
now through this the, the bill which has been sent they are trying to legalize the all the illegalities this i will not allow i will not allow and i have letter of the chief minister with me he wrote me four letters when i decided not to function as chancellor he wrote me four letters three letters at the end he said but government has also a role to play i said you play the full role i don't want to continue as chancellor but if i am the chancellor i am not going to be used as rubber stamp make it clear to everybody i am not a rubber stamp i shall apply my mind i shall come to my own judgment i shall apply my reason and then decide in accordance with what is in accordance with constitution law and conventions they are breaking every convention and you know, there is a, i do not know how to say it in malayalam there is a saying in hindi uh, maybe you are able to translate it someone of you lok tantra lok laaj ke sahare chalta hai democracy is run smoothly when you are careful that you do not offend public sensitivities if the government will indulge in breaking the law they will use how is it possible for the vice chancellor to appoint a relative of the personal staff of the chief minister without the knowledge of the chief minister is it possible and ugc has said in the court ugc has said that the they have they have very intentionally and wrongfully counted those years which were are not supposed to be counted as teaching years as teaching years so they are they are throwing all the laws to the wind no either i am not chancellor if i continue to be the chancellor then i shall ensure that government does not interfere this is a convention which is respected all over the world not just in india all over the world that the executive to protect the universities from executive interference this eh, you go to for instance you go to uh, in uk for instance what the oldest democracy if a minister to has to seek opinion of some professor as an expert minister drives to the house of the professor professor is not summoned to the ministry in usa the teachers whether they are university professors or they are primary school teachers they are the only exception when they go to give evidence in the in the court they are offered a chair no one else is offered a chair unless we have that kind of respect for the universities autonomy of the universities then everything will go already professor c n r rao professor panikar they have already said there are so many others who have said that the bright is to kerala produces brightest students the school system is robust first class but they do not want to stay in kerala they they go outside i was talking to a group of kerala students in delhi and i asked them i said i i'm not trying to persuade you to come back but i want to know the reason why you 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 don't pursue your studies in kerala then one of them said sir there are so many reasons but one thing is certain and certain is that if i join a class which has a, a period of 5 years then i will complete the course in almost Six and a half years, so I save at least one year. You can see, you know, MG MG University. He is one of the best vice chancellors, academically most eminent. But when I was coming, I saw how some people are trying to treat the public property, university property, inside the university. There are big billboards. of a particular political party how come are you paying some fee of it for it to the i have got it with me no badari mera phone ka i took the photographs how come how come they put their billboards of the political parties or youth wing of the political parties inside the campus 
Are they paying anything to the university? No, they consider that because we are in government, it is our own property. This cannot be allowed. Everyone will have to remain. And I must also tell you that there is a tendency because there are certain political ideologies, I do not want to name them. They have not originated in India. They believe in the use of force. They believe in the use of threatening tactics, which now I know for sure they applied on to me when I was addressing Kannur University History Congress. They applied, they tried to apply. But let me make it clear that they are they, they do not know me. I am not going to come under any pressure. More pressure they will try to apply. More threatening language anybody will use. More firm will be my resolve to uphold the constitution and the law. Thank you very much.